All right, everybody. Let's get the party started a little bit. Let everybody else fill in. We've got the there. 111 people in this session. Can you guys hear the music? <laughs> All right. I'm not actually dancing per usual. All right. Where's everybody from today? Miami. Nice. Multiple Chicago. All right. Teja. Nice. Nova Scotia. All right, everybody. Welcome to the session. Zell, welcome to the session as well. We got 118 people doing some data loading, which is always a fun and exciting exercise for us to go through. For those of you who are new, and I did see a few new people in the chat, we are excited to introduce you to your Click Coach, Azel. Azel, I know we got a lot of repeaters who know you, but for those who don't, you want to go ahead and give your backstory, what you do, where you're from, how you got into Salesforce? Uh, sure. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so, hi, everyone. Sorry, I have to excuse my husky voice tonight for once my power is on but my body is switching off uh, i do have a cold so please bear with me um so my name is Zizal. i'm a, a salesforce architect and i'm the practice lead for architecture at a company called blue sky we're based in south africa where i live and i have lived my whole life and i'm uh live in cape town right now and uh we we're, we're a salesforce summit partner we work with large enterprises uh, in different sectors to to build Salesforce implementations and, and do entire digital transformations for the company. Um, we also have an AWS practice and data as well, and we also have an advisory practice. Um, I took a very strange journey to get where I am today. I My background is actually social work. So that was where I started. I had no technical training whatsoever. Um, and had the great privilege of um, starting in a, a company that um, delivers Salesforce implementations for uh, nonprofits. And uh, they took me on because of my social impact background uh, and taught me everything that I needed to get started in the technical side. And uh, then, as you all may know, there's a great rich ecosystem of learning available for any autodidacts out there in um, in the Salesforce world. So that's how I got to where I am. Um, and I am very excited to hopefully be a small part of all of your journeys um, in the same awesome. similar direction. <laughs> Awesome. Love it. And Azel, we've got somebody over at Blue Sky, Jamie Lee, on the session, which is pretty fun. So Hi, Jamie. <laughs> that is awesome. Cool. Jamie, I love to see that. I don't know if that's the first time this is. I think we've had some small folks. So always excited when something like that happens. Azel, welcome to the session. I will try to keep this painless for you as you battle your cold. And hopefully we'll get a few more learners who are showing up on the stage to help Izel as well. All right, everybody, for a lot of the newbies, you're not familiar with how this works. We're going to give a quick agenda, and then we'll talk about how the skills challenge will go through. One, um, we'll give an overview of the prompt. Hopefully a lot of you have seen in the LMS already, which has a lot of this content. If you get lost throughout this experience, don't worry. The chat is there, and I am there to answer your questions. Azel is going to give some tips and tricks around data loading, and then we will start the challenge. So we'll have about 20 minutes for those of you who want to go through this challenge live. For those of you who have already done this, you can go ahead and raise your hand up in the queue, and we'll bring you up a little bit early just so we can make sure that we get people up here who have questions. And then at the end of that 20 minute timer, we will do feedback and Q&A where we'll have everybody else raise their hands, hop up on stage and share your work so we can all get to learn from each other. And for those of you who are new, we all get to learn from each other. That's how our clicked experiences work. We All of our insights and key learnings are learned through this experience, co-created through discussion and feedback. So if you've gone through this challenge already and you're new to Clicked. Again, you get to raise your hand, you come up on stage and you'll share your work from Mazelle and we'll walk through it together. Very different than a lecture. And if you're a little bit afraid to get up on stage, do not be. This is a safe 
space. Think of this as a jungle gym, a playground for your career. The emojis will be going uh, at all points in time. And we want everybody to just encourage you to just try things out and volunteer, hop up on stage. If you get lost, ask questions. There is a Q&A section, which I will be monitoring throughout, as well as the chat. And there's a great place to put it. And then everyone says it. We mean it. We want you all to have some fun as you're going through this experience. So there is no grading, no assessments, no nothing here, just a bunch of learning. And that's it, really. <laughs> and some fun. Maybe some witty banter. I don't know. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce the scenario and task for you all. So in this scenario, you are a Salesforce consultant working with Slack. Up until this point, Slack has only used Salesforce to track data for the B2C side of their business. They want to begin using Salesforce to track data for the B2B side of their business as well. It is your role to assist them in implementing a solution by adjusting their current Salesforce instance to support this request. So to begin working with this process for this integration, the team at Slack has asked you to upload a set of sales data, including average close time, opportunity size, and plan type from the B2B side of the business. And we got some links here for everybody. You, we have given everybody a set of data to work through on this experience. And this is the task. So we want you to scan the data and note any missing or incorrect data. We want you to then upload that data into Salesforce as contacts, create a, a free dev org if you don't already, and then create a brief note or presentation to the client describing the work you were able to do and highlighting any of the remaining questions you might have, such as how much of the data was ready for upload, how much of the data is missing, and then do you have any questions for Aaron? In this case, it'll be Azel, who would need to answer or complete the work. Cool, so we are going to kick this off, but first, Azel, any initial tips for our learners who might be going through this for the first time, looking at a raw data set, trying to figure out what to make, make sense of it? Uh, yeah, of course, and, and and we start exactly where you're saying, um, Jeff, uh, looking at the raw data sets and trying to make sense of it. That's the, always going to be your your first step. Is um, instead of like if you see lead, it's immediately going uh, with the assumption that you need to upload data to leads. Um, first, seeing you know what does a, a row in your Excel sheet or your data set what does it represent? Um, really interrogating that and figuring out. Where am I going to put this in, um, in this case, Salesforce? But if you are uploading it to any other system, you'll do the same exercise. Right? So that's the first step is to identify what is it that I have here and how am I going to essentially model it into Salesforce? Um, and it might be more than one object. Um, so that's one thing that you need to, to look at first. And then uh, you will likely go through the process of doing some data quality checks. So depending on who you're working with, if you are an admin working inside a company or you are a business analyst working with a company as a consultant, you'll likely have to um, do a bit of data analysis for the quality of the data to see if it's ready to be loaded into your target system, in this case, Salesforce. So um, you'll have to check that the formats are correct. Um, otherwise, you're going to get some errors when you start loading. Some people like a little bit to um, uh, to do a bit of a hit and miss. They, they um, do a bit of empirical style data loading where they would first try to load their data and then deal with the errors as they go along. But I would definitely recommend, you know, do the first quality check for, and, um, you know, use that as your baseline before you start loading your data into the system. Um, and what you might find also is that you have bad data uh, or missing data. And this is something you'll have to decide how to deal with before you continue. Um, so that's, yeah, I guess my kickoff tips. Awesome. <laughs> All right. And with that, um, for everybody who has not gone through, uh, do I have the pull up? Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and publish this really quick. Um, actually, let's go ahead and get the timer started now. So we've got 20 minutes for those of you who have not gone through the exercise already. Again, if you get stuck, you can post questions in the chat or in the Q&A section, preferably the Q&A section. It's a little bit easier for me to monitor um, and we'll be able to get through it. So the timer is going. Um, I'm going to quickly publish a poll here. Let's see. How many people have already finished the exercise? I know we had some people who had already finished it. You're going to working on it 
or if you're just going to be watching today. All right. Love it. I've always, I'm always interested in this. See how many people are actually working on it while we're going through this. So that's great. A little bit of time pressure is awesome. And as well, as I'm trying to look at these results here, um, do you want to talk about maybe a time where data loading went horribly wrong or just, you know, a project that you can think of where it just became an actual problem and you had to work directly with the client? No client mentions, please. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Um, probably every single project that I've ever worked on. <laughs> um, this is likely to be a spot, um, you know, we, we work agile, right? So we're always going to iterate and there will always be issues. And, um, you know, if if you're working on a project where everything goes as planned, you're fooling yourself or something. Someone's not telling you something. Um, so you're always going to have to deal with issues as they come up and and the data loading or data migration part of Salesforce projects are typically um, a very big uh, space for us. There's a bit very big, what we call it in data security, attack layer for mistakes, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so what will happen here is because you're dealing with such a high volume of essentially, uh, I don't know, data points, depending on the volume of your data set, but, you know, by nature, it'll be upwards of hundreds. And even with that small as data set, you're going to start getting issues where you have to perhaps look at the individual level quality, depending on what sort of data you're working with. So um, it's, it's definitely going to be a problem, regardless of which project you're on and regardless of how well you have your strategy planned out and regardless of which tools you use. So these things definitely help to make the process more painless, but it is one of those things that will just be a little bit more intensive and where you're likely to need some human oversight. So especially when we're looking at, um, sorry, bad or missing data. I know I'm, I'm digressing a little bit, sorry, <laughs> Jeff, but if we're looking at bad or you're missing good. data, uh, we need a sort of a human um, oversight to say, okay, this is why it's bad or this is what it should be looking like. Um, more of saying like something in our data set, maybe the email doesn't match the company. Is that something that we consider bad data or is there a possibility that um, that could happen? So you definitely need some human input there. And so just to get back to your original question, sorry about where things go wrong. Um, I've once, you know, worked on a project where we had to migrate data upwards of, um, I think it was like 10 million um, accounts and contacts that we were working with and opportunities as well. And it's just really, in that case, was really underestimating the amount of effort and, and not planning our strategy very well. Um, so I think that's the, the one thing to take away from this is it's a very important part of a project. It's very prone to error and it's easily underestimated because you'll see that even with a data set like this, after a while you get the hang of it and you think it's, it's quite simple and straightforward. Um, but especially the more data you have, the more likely is um, the complexity to increase. So always budget enough time to to do a project like this. Awesome, love it. And there's a couple of questions up here that I think are pretty relevant to get ahead of before Q and A at the end. Um, so Sadia said some data is squish in one cell, and I am not able to move to the correct cells. So for everyone, we have created this as view only because if we had 158 people editing a sheet together, it would be a disaster. So make a copy of the sheet so that you can work off of it if you haven't already. Um, all right, so um, Miriam has one here. I, I, I think this is a great question. I do wanna pop up and I'll send it to you, Izel. So she did some data cleanup and I'm stuck at the loading part. Either I'm picking a raw object to load the data or not sure what is going on. Miriam, uh, Izel, you're probably not gonna be able to debug this, but let me know if you've got any ideas. Otherwise, Miriam, you're welcome to come up on stage if you want. You can raise your hand and we can walk through it together here in a little bit. Um, but Izel, any kind of initial thoughts before we do the debug? Yeah, so once again, like I said, you have to decide to which object you're going to load the data into Salesforce. And um, you know, there's probably a few ways that you can go about it, but given all of the data that you have here, it might be several different related objects. 
right? So um, say, for example, you decide to load this as uh, uh, into the contact object, then you'll probably find that you won't have all the fields existing on the contact object that you have in the data set. Um, so maybe perhaps that's where you're getting the error. Um, so it depends really on what exactly uh, the problem is that you're facing. We'll have to look at that together, I guess. But um, the first thing is just to decide which object you're loading it to. And then if you do decide on one over the other, making sure that the data that you're actually trying to upload has a place to go, you know, like that the field exists in Salesforce. Awesome. Cool, cool. Perfect. So hopefully that helped. Uh, I had a feeling the answer was going to be, it depends. And then I'm going to pop up this poll really quick. So I want to see how many people we had. Three yeps, 44 working on it, and some people lurking today, which is always pretty awesome as well. Uh, so for those of you who are going to come up on stage, as Izil said, it depends. This is very much an it depends scenario. The first three people who come up on stage will get an it depends mug because we want to make sure we get some participation. So go ahead and raise your hands if you are already set or plan on presenting. And we'll actually start here in a little bit. Uh, if you don't know where the raise your hand cue is, it's on the bottom. I should probably know where it is, but I'm always host, so I actually don't know. So go ahead and raise your hand if you're gonna hop up. Nice, probably we'll get you up here in a bit. And I, there's one more question here I wanna go as well before I ask, well, this is a great one. Um, so the spreadsheet is small with limited data. How do you handle those massive amounts of old data? I know we talk about this a lot, right? Um, what are some of the tools? What are some of the ways that you might you might go through it with a with a larger data set? Yeah, Hetal, that's a great question. So that's likely going to be the case um, in, in real life, that you're going to work with much larger um, and sometimes massive data sets. And so Excel is actually, Excel or Google Sheets is, is not a bad tool for even handling medium-sized data sets, I would say, like even when you get to the thousands or tens of thousands of rows. Um, you can still use those tools and, and they are, are quite effective. And, and since we all probably know them pretty well, I would recommend if you feel comfortable doing so. Um, but when you get, you know, like upwards of that and you, you're starting to look at millions of rows, you're going to definitely see some performance issues with these applications. So you're likely going to look at something that can process larger data sets. Um, so, you know, if you have the skills and you know R or Python or something, you can use that to analyze and um, clean and structure your data um, on you know, a virtual machine or something like that. Or you know, if you go into very large data sets, I mean, that's really quite out of the scope for data loading into Salesforce, but um, you, know, you can go into something like Hadoop or something that really can handle that. But I think you'll never need that level of data management for Salesforce because you'll definitely run into your governor limits <laughs> and storage limits there. Um, so yeah, I guess when it comes to Salesforce and, and handling the data that you might load into there, I think, you know, look at if Excel, Google Sheets um, is too hard to manage. There are some third-party tools that gives a better user experience, but it's not as technical. Um, so some of the things I can think about is Jitterbit, there's a tool, um, Informatica Cloud. There's a couple of these tools that um, help you to manage large data sets and upload it into Salesforce in one sort of interface. Otherwise, you want, might want to use like uh, R or Python and use a virtual machine to handle large data sets if you have that skill. Awesome, 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 awesome. Hopefully that helped, Hital. All right, and Stuti's got a question. Stuti, I'm gonna go ahead and invite you to the stage if I can figure this out so you can ask your question. Um, let me know you got it. We got a few more people who have their hand raised. Awesome. So Stuti, uh, I'll go ahead and share it and then maybe you can, or maybe you can actually just ask it and go back and forth with yourself. Oh, hear me? Yep, you're good. I could hear you. Can you hear? Can you hear us, Duty? Having a little bit of audio issues. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear us, Duty? Um, so my question is um, sort of a, a difference between a, a downloading, uploading versus integrating, you know, an existing system uh, into Salesforce. So, like, when do you choose 
um, to download and upload a data or integrate with the exit system? Like, is the answer if integration is possible, that's what you should always do? And if you do that, um, does that mean like the company has to keep that initial system active sort of like forever or like cutting it off? Does that mean the data disappears? You know, like how does going from one system to the other system look like when it comes to uh, data transfer, data dumping, things like that? Oh, very interesting. Thank you for that question. Um, so this uh, veers into the realm of data architecture, right? and, and which is my my space, the solution design, and so on. Um, so what you're talking about, the integration, is what we will call data synchronization, and um, more specifically, batch data synchronization, and. Um, that is a, a integration pattern that's commonly used um, on servers. And then versus data migration, which is what we're doing here, or data loading is often called. Um, but in the, the context of from another system, um, we'll call it data migration. And that's basically what you were saying about downloading all of the data and uploading it to Salesforce. So um, you can also use data synchronization if there is an interface. So like you said, if um, there's already an integration between two systems, and that might be um, something that you've built personally, or it could be uh, a out of the box integration between two products. So Salesforce actually does have quite a few integrations with other products, um, including um, Star, uh, Tableau, or, you know, I think it's called CRM Analytics now because Salesforce acquired it, but it is a separate product. But there is a direct um, stream, so an existing integration that you can set up. I'm not sure. I've never imagined actually using that for a data migration. So I don't know if it's actually perfectly suited to it. But all I'm trying to say is that you can use an integration to move the data over. However, what you need to keep in mind here is so with data loader, we're using a specific Salesforce API, uh, the bulk API, right? Um, and it's geared specifically towards dealing with batches um, of high data volumes. Whereas other integrations typically use just normal REST APIs because it's made for transactional integrations, right? So, so one thing happens and you want to save that data into Salesforce in, from another system. So it's just one record, for example. So it's not geared towards that batch bulk data. You can, of course, build an integration using the, the bulk API, in which case um, it will be useful as well. But as you mentioned before, if you're going to do data synchronization between another system and Salesforce, um, you're essentially uh, doing that continuously. So um, the use case for that would be is if both of those systems are going to stay in place and are going to be used and you need a single source of truth, then you might synchronize across them both. But if you're decommissioning a system, um, and you're going to use Salesforce, or um, it's no longer necessary to use any updates in that old system in Salesforce, then the best solution is migration. So you're downloading the data and uploading it. Awesome. Amazing information, knowledge bombs. We need like a brain knowledge bomb when it happens <laughs> for emojis. Uh, and I know Stuti, uh, her audio died as she was going through it and she messaged me on the side. So we'll read that after, but that was a great question, Stuti. Awesome, awesome job. Uh, all right, cool. So let's take a look. We've got about five minutes, everybody. There's a couple questions I'll pull up here, Azel, as we get close to it. We've got two people. We've got Prabha and Fernanda on in the raised hands. If you are going to jump in here and raise your hand, please go ahead and do it now so we can build a queue because we got one more. It depends, but then we'll get up. All right. So let's see. There's a question in here. Where was the one? Where was the one? Ah, here it was. So we got one from Mangala. So how to deal with missing items like name, email when importing data to contacts? I'm going to assume probably missing the data. Yeah, excellent question. So this is absolutely why the data set also includes these sort of rows where there is missing data because it will be like that in the real world as well. So um, when you have um, a data set with missing data, you need to work very closely with your stakeholder to understand 
is it okay? You know, is it likely that there will be missing data um, in the real world for for these records? Um, and uh, or is it a mistake? You know, is it just that data has been destroyed, corrupted, or uh, was missing from the beginning? And if it's the latter, uh, your client, your stakeholder needs to go and um, enrich the data, update it, clean it, make sure that any missing data is um, either that a whole record is removed from the data set or some other value is either sourced or place holder values added there. So um, that's the first thing you need to do. And the second thing to do is if it is okay um, that there is missing data, if it is likely, if this happens in a real world scenario where they might not have the name of a contact, then you need to first reconcile that with where you're loading it to. So if you're loading it to Salesforce contacts, you need to check that the contact is in the required field, the contact name, sorry, which I, I don't believe that it is, only the last name is. Um, and if it is, then you'll need to find a solution like a placeholder or something else to put in that name, like anonymous or unknown. Um, so you have two like versions. So if the, it's okay that there's missing data and how you deal with that, and if it's not okay, um, it's typically your stakeholder that will have to go and um, update the data and make sure that it is in line with their standards or requirements. Awesome. In this case, you don't have access to a stakeholder, so I'll let you decide how you want to, to do that. Uh, perfect. And Azelle, I was about to jump into that too. So would love to get a little pulse check. Let's see how many people have actually been able to complete it. So we've got about two and a half minutes left. I've got Prabha with her hand raised. If anybody else is going to raise their hand, please do so. That would be amazing. We definitely want to get multiple people up here. Um, even if you are completely lost, by the way, come up on stage because we'll be able to live debug it with Azelle. And that is always awesome. So, um, Izel, I've got a question about stakeholder communication going back and forth, right? If something has, is, is wrong, like how do you, what's, the, what's some of your like tips of actually bringing it up with the stakeholder, making sure that you're working with them to make sure the data is clean um, or just remedy it? Like how do, you, how do you kind of approach that with, with clients? Yeah. Um, so the first step really is, um, and the way that we like to do it, even though it doesn't in, um, in actual life turn out that way all the time, but we like to set the expectation from the very beginning. Like we're going to load this data for you or migrate this data and we're going to help you through the process. But we are not responsible for the quality of the data. And if, you know, sometimes we contract to help and assist with data cleansing and so on, but at the end of the day, we're not going to make assumptions about our client's data. Uh, what means what, what is missing, what is bad data. They have to, to set those standards. And especially when it comes to like sensitive data uh, involving personally identifiable information, we often we don't want to even see that data uh, to not, uh, you know, risk violating any kind of GDPR or um, personal uh, information protection policies, anything like that. So we like to set the expectation beforehand is that we'll give you the, the plan, the migration plan, we can actually help automate or do the uploads for you. But the actual data cleansing um, is, is the responsibility of the data stewards uh, within the company. And then what we can do is share this, you know, the technical standards, like these are the validations that we typically see. Um, <clears throat> this is what a, a missing record might look like or a missing data point might look like. But then there will be the more, I guess, subjective um, decisions that they'll have to make around um, their data, whether it's complete or not. Uh, but anyway, so like we like to set that, that expectation, um, share the standards with them and then hope for the best <laughs> that they would actually do that. But there is likely going to be cases where they don't get to it or they miss some things. And then you do have to, to iterate on that communication. So that will come up with um, our analysis of the data if we're doing that part. 
if we find anything um, that's going not going to work, then it's always good to have like a, a general kind of standing meeting with the, the stakeholder to make sure that you check in, even if there's nothing to feedback on or anything to change, just to give them an update on how things are going. But then, um, yeah, just to tell them, like, I've seen this and this and this in your data set. Um, I might be wrong that this isn't missing data or it isn't bad data, but it is unusual or typically I find in my experience that this sort of data is unusual. Could you review it and try to make it as easy as possible for the stakeholder? If you are handling the data set, you can filter out the ones that have an issue and only share that back with them with a clear indication, like maybe a column of what the problem is with it. Um, awesome. And not just yeah, just not don't just give them a vague like there's missing data or something like that. Be very specific. Awesome. Beautiful. Azelle, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everyone, we have made it to time. For those of you who have been this before, you know how this works. You get to share your work, you get feedback, and we all learn together. Um, as I'm gonna bring up Praba to the stage, I did want to highlight Fernanda, you had this call out about missing data. Um, yeah, how would you work with, with a client for this? Feel free to do whatever you want, make up data if you're still working on it. So a lot of people were still working on it. So Prabha, would love to see what you went through. Feel free to share your screen for Zell and to get some feedback on the approach. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Hey, Prabha. Hi, uh, uh, this is my first time actually for presenting. And, nice. Uh, for me the opportunity. I'm very nervous actually. Don't be, don't be. Yeah. <laughs> so, Safe space. Yeah, actually, I would like to uh, share the Excel sheet and. Uh, yep. So, so the it. share box is on the bottom. It's a little box with an oh, up yeah, arrow. Right. Yeah. Can you see it? And there's a ton of good questions. Everybody keep putting them in the Q&A. We'll definitely have a pretty lengthy Q&A section here today, which is awesome. And then again, if you are completely stuck, that's also awesome to come up on stage, as I mentioned. So probably let me know if you have any issues sharing sometimes system preferences, errors in Chrome. Well, I think I need to restart the browser, I think. Yeah, is it system preferences? I, I don't know. It's saying that uh, there seems to be an issue with browser permission. Please check and restart the browser. Too. Yeah. Yep. So go ahead and, and check it, uncheck it, just so you can share your screen. Um, and then restart Chrome and pop back in here, and we'll get you get you up on stage. Sure. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Probably we'll see you. All right. So we've got our vendor. Our vendor, welcome. Yes, to the stage. thank you, thank you. I actually uh, was stuck, so I'm just going to show you what I've Perfect. been doing. It's the way to do it. Sorry, I did not have any time to prepare an introductory note. <laughs> so uh, what I was, <laughs> I got this uh, uh, Google Doc, and I cleaned. First of all, I was able to. Uh, not uh, clean this one. I was not able to transfer this data to the Excel sheet. So that was a problem. And then once I started working on whatever I could, I cleaned up the data first. I cleaned up everything, ever looked for any duplicates and any blank and everything. I just cleaned that up. And then based on that, I just narrowed it down to contact name, company, close it, plan it, opportunity amount. I changed this name to company and I made an, uh, in the contact object, I just made a field also. In our vendor, so we only see the, um, the, the spreadsheet, the original, the view only. Oh. Our, our, oh. Our, yeah, we don't, see, we don't see the other one. So you can, you can share your full screen or just share the, might be best if you're going back and forth between stuff. Okay, sorry, let yeah. me just try again. No, no worries, you're good. Okay, where is it? I don't see that, so. So if you do the, so you hit the bottom and then you do share screen, instead of just doing a tab, you can share the, the full screen. Yeah, which is that's... A entire, it's the third option after share screen. It's the entire screen on the right. Okay. Share entire screen, right? Yeah. 
Right, I did that and I'm looking for my Excel. I don't know where it is. Nope. Okay, just a second. This might be it. Can you see the screen cool. now? Okay. Yep, looks good. Okay, wonderful. So I was able to not transfer the one that's like uh, in the bottom of that. I was not able to transfer that data, but this one I was able to, and I was able to clean it up, like took out the duplicates and any missing fields and everything. And uh, then I, uh, then I, can you see my other screen now or you cannot? No, so we're still on Excel, yeah. Okay. So go ahead and share that. And then instead of actually picking the, the, or you can just go to the program, our vendor, either way. But you can share entire screen. That might be easier instead of picking um, one one program. Okay, actually. Okay, so basically what I did was, I, uh, sorry, I'm just having some technology issues. So what I did no was I was able to just uh, clean it up and copy ID, uh, sorry, not ID, the contact name, company, plan type opportunity and close state to a new Excel sheet to transfer that into, I converted it into a CSV file ready for import. And then the challenge I was having was that when I'm trying to import it, uh, it's asking me to map it. And when I did not see exactly the mapping fields, I went ahead and created in the contact object, but still I'm not getting anywhere with that. It's failing, so I didn't know what yeah. to do. So, Arvinder, do you want to try showing the the fail in um, the dev org, and then Azel can, Azel, maybe some mm -hmm. initial thoughts? Uh, sure. Uh, let me stop sharing again, and this. So while you're sharing, I just want to mention that that's totally fine, or a great solution to the scenario that we're looking at tonight or tonight for me, sorry. Um, if you want to, uh, if you think that contact is a good place to upload this data to, but I need to create some custom fields to store some of the, the data um, in the set, that's also fine to do here. You don't have to have a perfect match. And it's likely gonna be the case in real life too, that you need to do some customizations to your system before you can actually load the data as well. Um, but we'll get into that another time. Okay, go ahead. So to import the data, I chose accounts and contacts. And then I added new records. And I was just trying to uh, choose my CSV file, which is this one. I did not choose anything over here. I was trying to choose by name, but I was unsure. Uh, like match contact by. So I just left this alone and just went ahead. So once I do this, these are the fields, even though I created a company field in contact, some for some reason it's just not showing up, but uh, maybe I have to check if I did something wrong, but when I try to map it, so this is what's company and this is what's coming. So this is account uh, DNB company, which I'm not sure is correct. And these are the fields. I don't know. Nothing comes up. Uh, okay. Um, so if you say map to and you choose contact field. Uh, I chose, uh, yes, I go, I'm going scrolling down to the contact field. Okay. And you don't find, you can't find company there. Yes. Even though I've just created it, I don't know for some reason it's not there. Like I just created mm -hmm. over here. Uh, Let's take a quick look at that field in the um, object manager. So it might be that the the visibility is preventing you from uploading. So I'll go, sure. So I'll go to contacts, go to the object. This is it. And then fields. And Oh, you know what? I might have created it in my other dev org. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So I can just do it quickly over here. But if I just match that, and still I'm having issue with the other one. Okay. Let's take it a says, look. Okay. Okay. 
And while we're going through that, as well, there's a quick question from Kathy. Um, for the scenarios using data loader better than data import wizard? So <clears throat> there's a, a nice way to think of using data import wizard versus data loader. And I would say import wizard is definitely for smaller volumes of data. Um, and, you know, it's easier to use, and, but it's also kind of geared to very specific use cases like accounts with contacts and leads and so on. Um, even though you can upload um, okay. uh, custom objects as well. Um, but yeah, uh, you'll see that there's a limit to uh, how many uh, records you can upload with uh, with data import wizard. So when you're getting to much larger volumes, it makes more sense to do um, uh, to use the data loader and you have more settings available to you in data loader. So if there's kind of complex or advanced settings that you want to set in terms of the format of your file or even how you process your batches of data. So this is a bit more advanced, but you can with the bulk API, you can uh, have batches and you can load them in parallel. So say you have batches of 100 record e records each, you can upload them in parallel at the same time or sequentially. If you do sequentially, then it's less likely that you'll get errors with parent records being locked for changes. You can go Google that and um, I, I won't go into too much detail right about it now, but just to let you know that there's kind of different ways um, that you can use the API or different settings that you can set with data loader that you're not able to access in the import wizard. So I would say uh, on a matrix of like, um, or a graph of complexity and volume of data, the higher both of those things get, the more likely you are to use the data loader instead of the import wizard. Awesome, cool, cool. And our, our vendor, yeah, yeah. So the I guess so this is the last one. Yeah, you. yeah. Sure. Sorry. Uh, so I had the company uh, field created mm -hmm. over there, and for the plan type, I was just trying to map it with this field over here, which is like organization type. Or do I have to just make another one for that? So you would have to make a different one. So see, the organization type here is a formula field which is by default um, read only uh, because it's system generated, right? So you won't ever be able to upload data to a formula field. Got it. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I, that's what I was, okay. And I hope if once I've done this, I'll be able to map it. And I'm sorry also, I'm taking is, so much time. No worries. No worries. Um, good live debugging. Yeah, I like just to while, while you're finding that, or, okay. I'm yeah, just going to refresh, it. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, while you're doing that, just a, a flag, uh, or not a flag, but just a note to everyone. You don't have to map all of the fields um, that are in your CSV as well. So if, for instance, um, you're actually splitting this out to different objects, like you'll do contacts and you'll do accounts and opportunities, and you're only going to upload some of these fields to contact, um, mm -hmm. you don't have to map all of your columns either. But in this case, now it should should work as well since we've been able to map them all. That's, it's showing me these errors, dietary requirements. Mm -hmm. You need to map the required field to contact. <laughs> this, okay. And food so, allergies. <laughs> yeah, so what's going on here is that in this org that you're working in, You've um, perhaps it wasn't another scenario or it was a um, trailhead challenge or something, but essentially there are two fields on the contact that ha are marked as required. So any data that you upload, you need to um, have actual uh, values for that record um, for those fields, dietary requirements and allergies. Because so if you go back to your contact tab, just next to this one, the, um, and you find one of those fields, maybe search for dietary requirement. If you go on there, you'll see that there's a, it's required. Um, see that okay. so check out. So that's why you're seeing that. And you'd see the same if there were other required fields. So just a general recommendation on, on these things. So when you do have fields that you want users to always add a value to, 
don't mark it as required when you create the field, rather make it required on the page layout, because in that case, you can still via the API or via data loader upload records without having to input a value there, but you still have your users enforce um, that rule. Uh, oh, so what you're saying is go and make it required on the page layout, not on the field yes. itself. Got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Got it. So should I try this or should I, should I refresh my screen? I don't know. Okay. Uh, you can try it again now. Yeah. Okay. So let's sure. see if it imports. Zero records. <laughs> um, still in progress. Um, so you can maybe just yep. refresh. Refresh okay. over here only. New page yeah. here. Yeah. Seventy-eight process, seventy-eight failed. <laughs> okay, so we can dig so, into the errors um, by viewing the results, but I don't know, um, Jeff, if we have time. To yeah, react. let's let's do a quick scan because I think this is pretty great learning. Whenever we can go through live debug, mm -hmm. um, we do have Pratva who will come up next. Pratva, do you want to let me know if you've got a PowerPoint or what you want to share? Just so, but go ahead and go. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. So, uh, should I stop sharing my Am screen I? then? No, go ahead, Arvinder. Yeah. Okay, so you want to see the result, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. so this is the the most important document in this process is you'll always get a results um, either if you're using data loader or the import wizard. And so let's see what your error, it looks like you have the same error for all of them. So it says the, the value um, for the opportunity amount is not valid for the type. Um, Okay, so there's a there's a misalignment between how you have your um, number formatted in your CSV and the um, data format that Salesforce is expecting. So if we just go back to your um, field, so if you go back to the object manager and the field um, that you're trying to upload to, like we can just see the um, data type, opportunity amount, I think it is. I had the uh, currency over here. Currency, yes. And then um, there's no decimals. OK, now let's look at your CSV that you were trying to upload. OK, let's see. Cool. Um, and then you can see if you click on that opportunity amount, um, it, and so then you can check the, yeah, two it has, yeah. So that's going to be the issue that you're having. So that's one of the things that I was mentioning around the data cleansing and validation. So you wanna make sure that your data is in the format that's going to be accepted by your target field or target system. So that's one of the things you'll have to do is you'll have to reformat this to align with um, uh, the Salesforce field data type. And okay. sometimes these are just things that come up when you try to upload it and you get those errors. So errors are your friends. They're helpful to understand. Yep. <laughs> okay, so so I will just uh, correct the formatting and uh, then Try do that again. later on. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, for I will sure. Do that. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. So Arvinder, I'll, you. I'll head it yeah. over to um, Pratva on this. So Pratva, go ahead. And Prabha, I do see you raise your hand again. We are going to have to wrap here pretty quick, but we love the live debugging Hi, session. Jay. So hey, hey Pratva, Hi, how's Jay. it going? Going Hi. great. Uh, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Okay, so uh, mine is also, I had uh, tried multiple times, but it failed. But uh, still other participants gave me the courage to try to uh, share here. So what I did first is, uh, let me share my window first. Okay. So I did try to sort out the data first. Uh, so there were some um, true false has some um, not aligned data. So I did, and then uh, bottom part also I was able to, I had to do some Google research for some uh, quick uh, uh, tryouts. So I was able to do that, but uh, still my data loading failed, but uh, I did have created some validations and uh, I was trying to, because it says the company file, right? So let me share one second. 
Great, thanks, Pratiba. And um, maybe you can share with everyone how yeah. you solve the issue of all of the those values at the bottom being in one cell. Sure, I, I'll maybe uh, in the end I'll try to show that. One second. Okay. Uh, do we see my screen where a new contact is showing? It's, yeah. it's a little uh, fuzzy, but we can see it up there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I did try to uh, create some new fields because I didn't see when I had this or uh, so plant type, I created like a pick list and then a contact name to match with the company name. Um, though uh, initially when I tried because of the last name was a standard field, means the name was a standard field and I, my data loading was failing because of I think that uh, so in my Excel sheet, I did created last name, which again, I separated with the com, uh, the name itself. But uh, still, uh, so yeah, those were some fields. I made changes in the page layout and all. And if I show my error is, yeah. So when I tried using data loader, yesterday I create tried to import via just import wizard also. It was failing. Again, it failed. I did downloaded my errors and it shows the uh, source uh, page, which is the contact ID had some issues. One second, let me share. because every time I'm changing my screen, I have to share one second. So this is the error it shows. One second. Okay, so here is the error it shows, I think. I don't know why it came. So which is, I think, the ID, not the ID number, but I don't know what is the first field. Can ID you click number? one of those one of those cells, Pratva, so we can see the error? Sure. Uh, click to the oh, left. Okay. Yeah, there you, there you go. OK, destination contact ID is not a valid. Yeah, it looks like a very similar error. <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, we were looking at just before with our vendor mm -hmm. as well. So it looks like we're looking at a number field. Um, your contact ID is a number field without any decimals. And then um, there are in in here, let's see the the IDs you have here have the, um, what is what are the hyphens between them? So um, yeah, hyphens. Yeah, so that's probably what's causing your error. So you just want to format it by removing the hyphens um, or okay. changing the type of field uh, to a, a text uh, on the contact ID field. Okay, so if we change it uh, to text, then I hyphens can be included in the Salesforce. Yeah, that's I right. haven't tried it. Awesome. Okay, sounds awesome. good. Perfect. Thank you so Great. much. I'll Great try job, again. Prats, but... Awesome. Yeah. And again, everybody, you can go back into Slack. So Farhan, we've got you up here. You messaged me. You've successfully loaded. Why don't you go ahead and share your screen, give two minutes, and we'll try to wrap this up so we can get Azel to bed. <laughs> um, so Farhan, go for it. And great job, our vendor and Pratima, for showing those errors. Failure is a step forward, and that's why we love those live debug sessions. Hi, everyone. Hi, uh, Jeff. Thanks for the opportunity and all. I'll be trying to quick as committed two minutes. You can see my screen? Yep, we see the AirMeet screen. Yeah. So, so first of all, yep. I think uh, this was the data set which was given to us. And first task, we need to like look at the data itself without thinking that what needs to be done, that there are certain fields which are empty, uh, what needs to be done. If the formatting is correct, if you see true and false using the data or the sorting, there are Ts and Fs and spelling errors and all. So I think that's what I first did as a step. And then what are the tasks like from lead created date and close date? And we need to capture that number of days, how much it's taking. So formula needs to be applied here. So basis, like as a part of the data cleaning exercise, that was the first step for me and created this Excel sheet, providing that ID number, contact, company name, email, lead created date, close date. This was the field which was required, like average close time required. 
plan. So I think this was the first step where I was not clear. I filled certain fields or I leave them aside and all. Once this step is done, uh, I looked at, uh, went to the sales org and uh, st- uh, used the data loader uh, as exercise. It gives me the option of account and contact. And when I map all those fields, it gives me the option that these things are available or these fields are available in the contact and these needs to be created. So use utilize those and created that. And once you map it, it's able to do it and I able to successfully upload my data, all the fields and all. So, so I think the first step for all of us is make sure the data is clean. As next step you move, it will give us the option of mapping which field to which field. Either we can leave as blank as Alaya said, or we can create those fields and it will help us to do that. Awesome. Great job, Farhan, for making it. Is there any thoughts? Yeah, I just want to say great job, Farhan. Thanks for sharing with us and taking us through your journey. And now everyone knows who the expert is on Click. I mean, on Slack. <laughs> we need to, to ask someone something. So thanks for sharing. Just one awesome. thing. Awesome. Great job. Question. I have a question. Okay, so we, we have like here, we were using certain fields from Optis as well, like uh, value of this. And those fields are not available in contact. So what do you suggest? Like, should we use import visit for that because that allow more objects for us or should we create those fields in the contact? So I think that's my question. Yeah, a great question. So it depends how you it's the scenario, right? But um, in real life, when I looked at this data set, I would probably upload it as three different related objects, um, opportunities, contacts, and accounts. Um, and, and then you have to do either multiple data loads where you relate them to one another, the records, or you can, with the data import wizard, you can at least do accounts and contacts in one go, but then you still need to do the opportunities. Um, some people, you know, went with the uh, approach of just uploading it as contacts and creating custom fields for the purposes of this uh, exercise, absolutely fine. But in real life, you're always going to want to look at where is the most appropriate place for this data to live. And I would like to say um, you would have that on an opportunity record. Perfect. No, that makes sense. I didn't thought of that, that we need to do it separately. But yeah, that makes sense. Thank cool. you. Thank absolutely. You. Thanks, Jeff. Great job, Farhan. And everyone, we did post the feedback link. Your feedback always helps us make these awesome experiences more awesome. Uh, We ran a little bit out of time, and I want to be mindful of that. So everyone, if you can, head to the emojis. Give Izel a huge round of applause for powering through while sick. I know, always hard to go into the matrix, Izel, when you're sick. But really, really appreciate the live debugging sessions and everything you do for our learners. And for everyone else, the experience does not end here. Head to Slack, keep working with the community, share your questions, share your content. If you've done it, try to work through together and keep working through this hands-on experience. So thanks again, everybody, for attending the session. And Azel, have some tea, get some rest. Thank you for powering through even though you're sick. Thanks. So. I Actually, this made me feel much better. So <laughs> thanks, everyone. Awesome. Bye. All right. Great job, everybody. See ya. Bye. Yeah.